My husband of 20 years is in a relationship with our son's 18-year-old woman while I'm with others. People I talk about in this post will have fake names. I, 41F, am a mom who stays at home with her kids 24-7. Paul is my husband's name, and he works in business. Our wedding anniversary was almost 20 years ago. Our two children are an 18-year-old son named Eric who is a student in high school and a 15-year-old daughter named Mary. Their presence makes my life bright. There are a lot of reasons why my marriage to my husband has become stale over the years, like his work schedule and the fact that I've changed a lot since we met. 18F is Eric's girlfriend, and the two have been together since they were juniors in high school. We are going to call her Amy. Eric loves Amy so much. He fell in love with her first, and I've always thought of her as family. I'm going through a terrible mental pain because of this. Earlier this week, I accidentally looked at my husband's phone and saw a text thread between him and Amy, our son's girlfriend. I read what looked like a message from Amy telling him that she misses sucking his cock. I just stood there frozen in shock. I told myself all day that I must have gotten what I saw wrong. But I didn't get it wrong because I found a file on his computer a few days ago that was full of BDSM porn. He is obviously hooked on porn. In addition, he has pictures of Amy on her Instagram saved on his computer. The fact that she was fully dressed and the pictures weren't inappropriate was proof enough for me that I wasn't going crazy. I also took a few moments to look at his phone and saw more of their conversations. After looking, I wish I hadn't. He kept comparing me to her, and they were full of mean, hurtful things said about me. He would say things like, fat, and, old, to me, which made Amy lol. Thoughts or fears that Paul was cheating on me have always been there, but I could never have imagined something like this. This past month, I discovered a thong in our bedroom that I am sure wasn't mine. I ignored it because I was ignorant and thought it might have been our daughter's, even though that didn't make any sense. He's cheating on me and our son at the same time. I am utterly crushed. I don't think words can completely express how scared, angry, and shocked I am right now. I don't know how to deal with this because something needs to be done, but I'm also scared of what kind of psychological blow this will be for my son. I don't know how to even bring up this totally messed up subject with him. That's why I wouldn't want this to happen to my worst enemy. I'm shocked I married this jerk in the first place. Then my mind began to race when I realized I had been noticing some very strange behavior from him around the time Amy turned 18. Did he want to wait until she turned 18 before having this affair? All of this has so many levels, and I'm frozen with fear and dread about them all. It all doesn't make any sense. What happened? Am I really that stupid that I let all of this happen while I watched? Eric loves Amy, and the thought of telling him this sick truth scares me. It could be terrible for his young mind and heart. My heart breaks for Eric and Mary, who are just spectators and have done nothing wrong. This is something I haven't talked to my husband about because I'm afraid of what might happen next. Regarding this, I don't know who to talk to first. When I tell my story, it's not to get sympathy. I want to learn and maybe get some advice from people who have also been through deep betrayal. Thank you for paying attention. Please give me more information from the OP so that my first post isn't too long. I didn't think I needed to go into all the details of this. I chose not to go into those specifics. How I saw it by accident was this. Using his phone. The app for iMessage was still open, but he wasn't using it at the moment. You know how on an iPhone, if you swipe up, it shows you all the open apps and lets you close them. I noticed it when he was ending the programs, which is something he does all the time. His iMessage was not open for everyone to see because he was a stupid fool. I saw that he forgot to run the app because he swiped up from a different one. In my post, I also said that I looked at his phone again on a different day to make sure my suspicions were correct. You are wrong to say that I am now magically changing my story. I am staying the same. Helpful comments. Close up of yogurt 5338. If she just turned 18, isn't this against the law? There is no way they weren't breaking the law before she turned 18. And even if it is, they are more than 30 years apart in age. It looks like your husband is an ASF. Police right away. In the original post, she has been 18 for five months. It's been hard for me to figure out when their affair began. I'm doing everything I can to figure that out. It seems like every two weeks, 
he deletes his texts. I haven't been able to figure out when this all began. OP adds information in the comments. Thank you all so much for your help. No worries if I haven't answered your private texts yet. The time will come for me to do it. Having to deal with a lot and take a lot of steps that need to be made right now. In this crazy and terrible situation, I'm trying to be smart and plan ahead. Please understand that I never thought about not telling my son about this. I wasn't trying to convey that way. I just told you I'm really fearing it, but it needs to be dealt with. This is one step in the bigger plan I have. At the moment, I'm acting stupid and gathering as much proof as I can to be ready for anything. It's important to me to keep myself safe and avoid situations that could put me in peril. A more detailed report will be posted soon, when I can. Thank you all so much for making me feel less alone and touching my heart. His affair with our son's 18-year-old lover is the reason I'm divorcing him. I'm using fake names to protect privacy. I talked about something a few days ago on another topic that involved my 41F husband Paul, 48M, our 18M son Eric, and our 15F daughter Mary. I found out that Paul was seeing Amy, our son's 18-year-old lover. My son has been seeing her since they were high school students. My brother told me about a tough lawyer who looks like a trash dog. I took pictures of all of his talks with Amy and saved them. Apple's iCloud only gave me the last three months. Most of what they said was flirty and dirty. It was gross and hard to swallow, and I saw a lot of bad things said about me. According to his call records, he usually talks to her for hours on end. He uses tools to find dates. I took pictures of all of his accounts and the chats he's having with his matches. It's clear that he only dates girls who are about 18 to 22 years old. The computer's files were all copied. His favorite site is OnlyFans, which he spends a lot of money on. I looked in every hiding place I could think of in the house. He had different toys, gags, blindfolds, lubricants, and other things. Besides that, he wore different clothes that made him look like a Catholic school dress for girls and a French maid. The three of us drove to my brother's house after picking up Eric and Mary from school. By the time I picked them up, they could tell something was wrong. I carefully told them what was going on, and then I started crying. Mary was truly furious, even more so than Eric. Whatever happened, I told Amy's mom. I got Amy's phone back, and she gave me the whole chat log. Just like on my husband's cloud, it only went back three months. It was almost like they both deleted the texts at the same time. She said Amy cried when she was told what happened. Amy pretty much told her mom that she and he are in love and that her mom will never understand. I don't want to go into too much detail about what else she said, but it's safe to say that my husband slowly and steadily became a wise figure in her life, making her feel like she could depend on him. She came from a broken home, which he used against her. Amy also won't stop saying that they've only recently turned their friendship into a romantic relationship. She says that before that, he was more of a friend and guide. I spoke to Paul on Zoom. Horrifying was the look on his face. It looked like he was sweating a lot and turning red. His eyes were filled with anger and fear. He spoke in a very defensive and scary way. His words kept going over and over again, and he said that none of that happened. He couldn't speak without stuttering and getting very angry all the time. It was all so confusing to me. He told me I didn't have the right to take his kids away from him when I wouldn't tell him where I was. He then suddenly left the Zoom. My lawyer is requesting temporary full custody of Mary and an order to keep her away from me. Mary is still the most outraged. It's only natural that she's angry with her dad and Amy. Mary is having a terrible time as she remembers times she saw her dad connect with her friends. You can tell Eric is hurting, but he's so strong and calm. Someone is helping him. I am proud of how mature my children are becoming. They aren't deserving of this. Things were reported to the police. I'm going to be very mean and not forgive anyone during this breakup. I'm thinking about how he's treated me and how it's broken me down. Because of him, I've had a very bad opinion of myself for the last 20 years. Because I don't want this jerk to get away with it. I want to start over and be stronger than ever. Helpful comments. How does your son feel? How have things changed between him and Amy? He hasn't talked to Amy since he heard the news, and I don't think he will ever. Not saved. 
Has someone told you for sure that the thong you found was Amy's? Things are going badly. In the original post, I said it wasn't my daughter's. Nobody else could have it besides her, since she said it wasn't hers and I knew it wasn't mine. Not saved. Do not move yet. Do you mean that they slept together in the master bedroom? Oh, okay. 9114. Addicts don't they always sleep in their spouse's bed? Output. Probably, I think he did. According to the replies, both the OP and his son are going to get tested and checked out. It's unclear how many different women he's been sleeping with. Also, Amy's mom has been in touch with me, and Amy has been telling me she wants to run away with him because they love each other. Change code 2. Thanks again for all the love and support. Really important to me and comforting. A lot of comments and texts have said that they think I'm making up this story, which makes me feel better because I don't believe it myself. There are people out there who can't even imagine this being true, which makes me feel better. It looks too real to be true. I have been worried about and thinking about how other people feel about this, ignoring how I feel, which is something I'm trying to change. I'm like a light switch, I can be angry or numb. Everyone is still safe at my brother's house. His house is safe because we're being very careful. Paul keeps trying to call my cell phone every day. I'm not going to talk to him, and all communications will be handled by my lawyer. Honestly, he scares me. He has an alarm system and locking locks on his house, which makes it very safe. His presence makes us feel safe. Our doctor checked us both out and gave us tests. So far, the immediate rapid tests make it look like we're both clean. But we won't know for sure until the lab reports come in over the next few days. I'm not too worried. Eric is going to see a therapist early next week, which is a good idea and something he needs. Currently, he's not himself. Honestly, he looks a little shocked, and I'm worried. It's tough to figure out what's going on in his head because he takes things to himself a lot. Still, he's kind and has been talking to me and asking how I'm doing and all that. Writing to his dad is not at all something he wants to do. He has only called my cell phone and not Eric's or Mary's. From what I can tell, Paul is very nervous. He is scared, and I think he knows deep down that he would be in a lot of trouble if this was fully looked into. This is what my gut tells me. I keep thinking about the Zoom call we had, and the more I do, the more it seems like his whole world could have fallen apart. His face showed that he was very scared. My offer to make an appointment with a therapist for Mary also fell through, but she doesn't want to see one yet. She said she's okay with it in the long run, but she needs some alone time. Her friends have been telling her about her dad and if they've ever felt creeped out by him. She told her friends the truth, and they said they thought he stared at her a lot and felt like he was always around when they were with them. As far as one of Mary's friends was concerned, she thought he was constantly observing her, as evidenced by his frequent comments about her rear end and the color of her yoga pants. It wasn't a big deal at the time, but after everything that's been going on, it seems strange now. She said that he would pick different places to sit to get a good view of her. He also asked them what kind of friends they had and what kind of school group they were in. He kept asking them if they were well-known. They did this at our house, and it makes me feel really bad. When it comes to Amy, which is why I wanted to write this report in the first place, I agree that she is also a victim. Several people have made that point clear, and I agree. I did everything in my power to offer her ways to get help in a roundabout way. I told her mother, as I said, and she's been telling me everything. Amy is still stuck in her dream world, which is sad. I can only pray that she will finally wake up. She doesn't want to see any therapists or doctors, and she has been trying to get in touch with Paul all the time because she thinks they are dating. I've been told that she hasn't been able to reach him and that he hasn't been talking to her at all. Amy thinks that I am very controlling because I took away his gadgets. When her mother tries to tell her the truth, she is met with hostility and conspiracy ideas. Amy thinks of me as bad, and she still has a rosy view of Paul. Her mother showed her pictures of his dating app accounts and matches, but she doesn't believe it because she thinks I edited the pictures. Amy keeps telling her mom that I'm jealous because she takes better care of her new boyfriend than I do and that everyone is mad that she found a real man. There are a lot of complaints about things I don't do for him sexually in some of the chats I've screenshotted. She is very sure that she and Paul will be together for a long time right now.
that guy is really a jerk. It's my only hope that Amy will see sense, but I don't think that getting involved would help right now. But maybe in the end. Helpful comments. Useful asterisk, escape year 1845. I'm disappointed that this occurred to you. From reading your other posts, I really think that your husband wasn't a good one to begin with. When you're ready, you'll find someone who thinks you look great as you get older. That includes your son. He will be fine. He learned the hard way how guys shouldn't act. A hurtful one. He'll eventually understand that Amy was mistreated and manipulated, though. She seemed to be weak, and your ex took advantage of a child who was in a bad spot. Amy might tell the cops the whole story after she has had some time to think about how bad things were. Before she turned 18, I'm sure something was going on. Things must have happened before she turned 18. Miliano John. Do you believe they kept their relationship a secret for the majority of Eric and Amy's time together? That sounds like a really gross father and pig. What a mess. Though I'm not sure when they became sexual or personal, I believe he began to prepare her as soon as she came into the picture, when Eric began dating her freshman year. Amy talked about an instructor and a friend who had to start right away. She is so dependent on him now that she believes everything he says, which shows that he must have had an effect on her over a long time. The last time she turned 18 was about five months ago. It seems like she's been in love with him for a long time based on how she acts and talks about him. Highlight for one minute, bust 6892. It's not a problem if they are adults giving their permission. This is a private matter that should be handled by lawyers and the people concerned. These days, people are too scared to call the cops to fix their problems. The OP is taking care of this the right way. Her lawyer will do the right thing if there are any legal problems. Output. Just the idea that Amy might have a sudden realization of how things really are is all we have to go on, and she tells us straight out when it started. She is 18, though, and doesn't want to say or do anything that might get Paul in trouble with the law, so there's not much that can be done. I don't know about any other girls yet, so I hope they forget about me. Second story. Asterisk, my stepdaughter called me mom, was my ex-husband's angry ex-wife. That's what my niece asked me. The man of my dreams, 44M, and I got married last month. He has a 16-year-old daughter from a previous marriage. I've been her friend and a reliable adult for four years, and she's been a part of my life for the same amount of time. She's a great kid. We were more like sisters than any of my sisters, and I could tell she trusted me and looked up to me. Another crucial matter. She has some signs of autism. I swear that makes sense. After two weeks of honeymoon, my husband and I came back on Friday. My stepdaughter came up to me and asked if we could talk. She told me that no one had ever been as kind as I was, teaching her how to make foods just the way she liked them, or as patient with her inability to control her emotions. She sounds like she's doing great. She told me I was her favorite person in the world, so she asked if she could call me mom. I had to take a moment to think about what had happened. She felt bad about what she had done and said she was sorry. I told her it wasn't stupid because I would love that. It was great that she got so excited and hugged me. Later, when I told my husband about it, it hit me that I was now someone's mom. I suddenly stopped and told him I was a mom. He then asked me if I felt like I was in the delivery room, which was funny. I laughed at that, but it made me feel so bad that I started crying. She said, hey mom, to me when she came downstairs this morning. It will take some time to get used to, but holy crap that was a great feeling. No changes were made to the original sentence as it does not require editing. As it turns out, I got married and had a daughter last month. It's a pretty good deal, in my opinion. Helpful comments. OP was learning how to cook her daughter's food the way she likes it while she was reading a book. I really liked the part where she said that she thinks her daughter is the cutest thing ever, even though her daughter is embarrassed by how she acts. Just think of how confident she will feel and how good her kid will feel. Feeling happy about this. When I made dinner for everyone the first time, not long after I met her, about two months, I broke the spaghetti in half and she said she couldn't eat it that way. I told her it was okay and I could make another batch, which I did. She said she was sorry and was going to make herself a lunch. I found out later that she cried after I left because she thought her food tastes made me feel bad and hurt her dad's relationship with her. 
a little strange at first, but hey, I'm sure we've all asked a waiter or waitress for something special at some point. The ex-wife of my husband was mad that my stepdaughter called me mom on March 18, 2024. I just wrote a post about how happy it made me that my stepdaughter asked to call me mom. My husband has two daughters from a previous marriage. One is 16 years old and has autism, and the other is 26 years old. They got separated, and she pushed for custody of their older daughter because she was more independent and needed less help. He got custody of their younger daughter. Because of this, his younger daughter has always felt like her mom doesn't really love her, and she doesn't go out of her way to talk to her. The older daughter finally got the job she'd been looking for for a few years, and she wanted to do something special with her family this evening. From the times I've talked to her, she seems like a nice girl, but her mom is rude and passive-aggressive. When we got to the restaurant and sat down, everyone was nice and polite. It was hard for my stepdaughter to decide what to order because she had never been to the place before. We were sitting next to each other. I picked out a type of pasta that looked like something we make at home that she likes while we were looking at the menu. She told her mom thank you. Her real mom stopped everything and asked, what did you just say, so I guess she did say it loud enough. Even though my husband and I tried to calm her down, she was still very angry and asked why she did what she did. Finally, their older daughter got her to move on by asking to tell her mom about her new job. For the rest of the night, my stepdaughter didn't say much. On the way home, she tried to say sorry for ruining the night, but we told her she didn't. As if that wasn't bad enough, she and my husband both got a four-paragraph message about how rude and offensive it was that she called another woman, mom, and how it made her very upset. He can't believe it and feels terrible for our daughter. She didn't say much when he went to talk to her, but it was clear that she thinks this is all her fault. It was more my fault than hers for not talking about how she should address me with my husband at dinner and then with her before. I hate that this woman is making her so upset, and I can see why my husband split up with her. Appreciate you reading. When DLDR, my stepdaughter, started calling me mom, her real mom got very angry and sent her and her dad a four-paragraph text message about how rude that was. Now our daughter feels terrible. Helpful comments. Very impressive buyer 4625. Details. Is the ex-spouse ever with her autistic daughter? If it's not, I don't see why she would be shocked. Output. They see each other on vacations and at family events. All of that is done. It looks like her mom deserves that respect just because there are 101,010 trees around. I know it's not the same, but at work someone called me mom. Ha ha ha. It seems like I radiate motherhood even though I don't have any kids. Maybe not in a bad way. The ex-wife is a disaster. Being responsible for a child with special needs is admirable. You should get the mom because you did a great job. Output. For sure. It bothers me when women demand to be called moms but don't try to be moms or when men demand to be called dads. Also, I want to say that even though she has special needs, she is very strong. Her goal is to get a job after school and is now thinking about college. She has trouble controlling her emotions and has very clear tastes in things, but that doesn't make her any less like the rest of us. Exciting travel one. That girl is so sad. It would not have happened if her mom had been a mom. The things she does or doesn't do have effects. She might find it helpful to get help from a professional, but I'm not sure if she has one. Now, the thing that worries me the most is if her mom keeps sending her things or making her feel bad about more things. Output. Yes, she does see a therapist once a week. Every day, my husband's ex-wife will definitely show up. Thanks, Emma Rasmoek. Details. How long has it been since the bi mother gave up care of her 16-year-old daughter? How long does she spend taking care of her? How did they become friends? She's crazy to get mad that a kid she doesn't spend as much time with calls you mom. Your parenting seems very kind. Continue, OP. Every holiday and family get together since elementary school, I've asked them awkwardly how they've been since last Thanksgiving. The young autistic child was taken care of by my husband, who learned how to make foods just the way she liked them. Learned how to speak her language, as he calls it, and how to sit and raise a child who is still growing. The high schooler's ex-wife then got care of her. 
she could be left alone at home to cook her own meals and work without having to worry about anyone or anything. Somewhat. Update. The ex-wife of my husband got really angry. I was called mom by my niece. Recently, I wrote about how my husband, my 16-year-old autistic stepdaughter, and their oldest daughter, 26, went to dinner with his ex-wife and their oldest daughter to celebrate her getting a job she's been looking for her whole adult life. Then, my stepdaughter called my mom. At one point, my ex-wife got mad and stopped the whole table to make a point. The rest of the night wasn't great, and when we got home, she sent a big text message to both my husband and stepdaughter saying how rude that was. My stepdaughter told me the next day that her older sister had texted her and asked if she could read the text out loud. It was like Jesus Christ, here we go. I just nodded and said, yes, but inside I was rolling my eyes. Her sister, on the other hand, sent her a very sweet message saying she felt bad about what happened the night before and asked if she wanted to change things between them and be sisters again. Then she said that she had asked her what movies she had seen recently, which was a very meaningful question for her because movies are her favorite thing. That being said, I was surprised by how sincere and kind she was, it was really sweet. The next day, later that day, I got a text message from her older sister. I think she got my number from my younger stepdaughter. She said she wanted to get to know me better since I am now legally her stepmother and her baby sister calls me mom, so she thought we should meet. She also said that she missed celebrating her sister's 16th birthday with her. She thought that was a big deal and asked if we could go to dinner and the movies together. This evening, just the three of us went to the movies and ate dinner by ourselves. The movie my younger stepdaughter chose, she loved it. My older stepdaughter and I didn't get it, but it doesn't matter, she liked it. It was a lot of fun to eat dinner with each other after that. Then, as we were leaving, my younger stepdaughter asked if she could quickly buy something at the store next to the restaurant. We said yes, of course. My older stepdaughter told me while she was in the store that she thought badly of me after seeing how the two of us interact at dinner the other night and tonight, me going through the menu with her to find something she likes, me standing up for her when their mother got mad, and how she clearly feels comfortable around her and knows why I'm now her mom. An overall pretty good night. I saw that she sent me a text about something we talked about when I got home, so it looks like we're going to talk now. We still need to work out some things with her real mom, but this is a win. Anyway, I just wanted to share something good because Reddit is full of bad things, and I also wanted to give you an update on my life. Helpful comments. Lindo A.W. I saw the last post about it. This change makes me so happy. I'm so glad that your daughter has an older sister who can help her and that your family feels like it has grown a bit. Well done, and thanks for the good news. Of course. Indeed, hearing them talk again made me very happy. A few months ago, my younger stepdaughter was trying to tell her older sister about a movie that meant a lot to her. Her older sister was being mean and snarky about it to get her goat, and my younger stepdaughter started crying. I think it's great that they're getting along.